Welcome back to the Tom Harbin Program. Six minutes past the hour. Last week at the NRA convention, or last weekend at the NRA convention, one of the speakers who got the most publicity, whether he wanted it or not, was Rob Pincus, who a firearms and personal defense expert, professional trainer, the owner of ICE Training, his website, icetraining.us, when he suggested that guns should be stored in kids' bedrooms in gun lockers in their bedrooms and a lot of us went on the air afterwards and said what really so i thought i would just ask him in person rob pincus welcome to the program thank you very much sir i appreciate it thanks for joining us uh you are you a parent i am i mean i you know i i've raised three kids i was one myself i have three brothers um I, i can tell you i remember when we were my parents never owned a gun, but I remember when I was like maybe six or seven years old and my parents were gone. We had a babysitter and we found a box of condoms in my dad's bedroom and it was well concealed. And we didn't know what they were. We thought they were really cool balloons. And when my parents came home, they discovered me and my three brothers out in the front yard with like 10 or 15 blown up condoms, and these giant balloons bouncing them around. Uh, you know, I'm... I, I just can't, you know, in retrospect, can't imagine my father's humiliation and the and the poor little babysitter. She had no idea what they were and what was going on. She was, you know, some uh, 13, 14 year old. And had that been a gun rather than a condom, I shudder to think what would have happened. Do you really think that guns should be stored in kids' bedrooms? Well, I don't think that, that guns should be stored in the same way that one would store, uh, you know, prophylactic. I think that when you say lockers, um, in the presentation at the NRA show, what I was talking about was gun safes and actually securing them. So right. the logic is that, in, again, in context, the logic is when someone chooses to have a firearm inside of their home for defense of their family in a worst-case scenario, they really have two options. Should they keep it where they spend most of their time, secured in a safe, uh, the bedroom, the home office, in the event that if someone tries to break into their home or does break into their home, they'll be close to their tool of defense? Or should they hide it in the place that they are going to secure themselves and their family, where we, which we call their barricade area, while they lock a door, get on the phone with the police, and, and of course hope that the police will get there before they're forced to use the gun to defend themselves? So as a parent, you, you of course uh, probably agree with me that one of the first things that would occur to you if you thought there was an intruder in the home is to go check on your kids. And uh, knowing that, I think one of the options we have to consider is... The first thing I would do if I thought an intruder was in the home is I'd dial 911. Okay, well, I wouldn't. I would, I would go check on my daughter. If I thought she were in the house, I wouldn't stop to make a phone call. I would be worried about protecting her. I don't think it so, takes that long to make a phone call. And, and uh, I want the police on the way. I want somebody who actually you know, knows how to deal with things like that on the way. And I think that's the issue. A responsible firearms owner who has a home defense firearm is going to know how to handle the situation, and they're going to plan ahead. And that's really what the purpose of the seminar was, was to say, when you go check on your kids, one of the things we advise you have there is an old cell phone. You know, an old cell phone on a charger, even if it's not on contract, can be used to make a 911 call. So that's something else we advise being kept in the kids' room, so that you can barricade there, get the police on the way, and if you do have the training and the responsible ownership of a firearm, then you can also be standing there with a perfectly legitimate and efficient tool of defense should that intruder you know, get it, it, but, but, but when you look at the numbers, Rob, Rob Pincus, the, the probability of somebody stopping a home intruder with a gun, you, you look at, compared to the probability of a kid accidentally killing another kid or somebody committing suicide with a gun, I mean, there, there are not that many home intrusions in America. There are not that many people who successfully, uh, you know, defend themselves with weapons. And even, I mean, what, we had this district attorney, was it in Colorado? It was a couple of weeks ago. The guy, uh, you know, was prosecuting a, a bad guy who, who came into his house, killed his wife, and then killed him as he was heading for his gun. I mean, it's, you, 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 having a gun in your house does not make you om, omnipotent and does not turn you into Superman. It just makes you a guy with a gun in his house who's more likely to either commit suicide with it or have your kid accidentally shoot somebody. Well, we, I agreed with you up to that last point. I, I think the issue here is, in context, this whole security plan doesn't ero- revolve around the gun. Too, too often the conversation with the people that don't understand guns people that aren't used to guns, people that aren't comfortable with guns, and as you said, didn't grow up with guns, the conversation is just about the gun. 
at the NRA convention, the gun is already established as, as a taken-for-granted premise. Well, I'm so. comfortable with guns. I've used a lot of guns. I'm a, I'm a fairly decent shot. And, sure. and, and I've, I, I, not professionally competitively, but my, my, my brother and I shoot competitively regularly and have for years and years. And I would not have a gun in my home if I had children in my home. There's no way. I mean, you just look at the numbers. I, you know, I, that that would condom you, incident would that I started out telling you about. I mean, that that would had if my parents had a gun, I would have found it. There's no way I wouldn't have found it. Would you Would you educate your kids about guns today, whether you would have chose to own one or not? Would you educate them about operating them safely and knowing how to act around them? The, well, yes, and in fact, and I and I have to say that because all of my kids, when they were kids, I had, I had taken them to to shooting ranges. I mean, they they've all handled uh, firearms. They've all they're all familiar with so firearms you, and firearm were, safety. But that's a whole different trained, thing from having a gun educated. safe in my son's room when he's you eight years old. In the in the concept of a condom or the proper operation of a condom. So when you found that box of condoms, you embarrassed your parents. No one got hurt because it wasn't important to be educated about condoms. But we agree that a responsible parent would educate their children once they were old enough to operate a gun about but guns. But if I was seven or eight years old, no matter what, you know, and uh, I mean, you've got to know this. A seven or eight-year-old, no matter how well you educate them about the gun, they're going to be thinking, oh, boy, oh, boy, I want to get my hands on that. Well, Especially we, we, if it's in my bedroom. I mean, boy, then I can work on it for hours and hours instead of just that, you know, half a day when dad and mom went shopping or something. The experience of, of millions of gun owners around the U.S. and millions of gun owning families around the U.S. Is, is contrary to that. That doesn't happen because the curiosity aspect is taken Actually, away. Actually, it does happen. It, it happens. It, it happens. happened it happened, it happened 500 times last year that, that kids accidentally killed, and, and killed other kids. Invasion, home and violent home invasions happened at a much more frequent rate. Not now, that we're successfully like, repelled by people with guns. That's, that's where I was just going with that. You like to say that they weren't successfully repelled with gun owners, but that's why I educate people. That's why we advocate that people are trained and prepared to defend themselves with but guns. But see, if, if somebody's coming into your house, you know, with, with malicious intent, I, I, you know, the, it, just, it just seems to me like you, you are taking such a chance by doing anything other than just dialing 911 and getting the hell out as fast as you can. Because well, because they're they're just as likely to take your gun from you and use it against you. Well, and I, and I beyond that, what what's all this hysteria? I mean, the, home invasions are really quite rare in the United States. Uh, you know, far, isn't the NRA in the business of just pumping and selling fear? Well, you, what about the fear that you're creating when you talk about the very rare occasion of a child finding an un an unsecured gun and killing another child. That's very, but it happens very more than once a day in America. That doesn't that, seem all that rare to me. I, I think I would have heard of it if it did, but what, what I'm curious about is how we think that calling 911 instantly solves the problem. You, I'm not saying it does. At the, at the seminar that has gotten so much attention uh, at the NRA convention, I taught one on Friday, one on Saturday, and one on Sunday. The first step that we teach in a three-step plan is to evade. The first thing we teach is get out of the house. If you're standing by the back door and the bad guy's coming in the front door, get out. But again, as a parent, if the kids are upstairs, I'm not going to run out the back door. I'm going to run upstairs to where the kids are. I'm not going to abandon my family and hope the police get there in time. But see, we should, I, you know, yeah, well, I don't, I, I just think even having this conversation. Uh, one of my callers earlier asked me to ask you, why is it that when people with guns are, who are white are they are identified as shooters when they're when they're Muslim or people of color they're identified as terrorists? I can't answer that. I okay. That seems All right. It doesn't seem very fair, does it? All right. Uh, Rob Pincus, you, his website ICE I C E Training U S Firearms and Personal Defense Expert. Thanks for dropping by, Rob. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good talking with you. We'll be back.